The first step to create a simulated portfolio is to identify our beliefs or how we select companies to invest or trade. Here are some of these selections. These are the data we've gathered in our past aggregators. Right now, for each company, we have data on what sectors, industry they belong to, the location of their headquarters in terms of country, state, or city, uh, the market exchange that they are registered to, the year founded, market capitalization, number of employees, most recent analyst recommendation, most recent in net income reported. So some of these preferences might not be so relevant with the past uh, for example, the most recent uh, analyst recommendation or net income uh, because there are a single most present data. Uh, it only applies to that single year. So it is your choice, your analysis and how this will fit into what you are trying to achieve. Maybe it makes sense, maybe it doesn't. If I had completed the previous aggregators wherein we are able to capture the rallies and sell-off for all of the companies, maybe that day when the price is rallied or sell-off could be another selection. Uh, so simulate a portfolio in which we selected the intraday rallies or sell-off. Uh, so these selections are just what we have so far.
This workbook allows for up to 20,000 lines of transactions. You can enter 5,000 lines, 10,000, or enter the maximum, which is 20,000 lines. And then 20,000 lines can be divided into 5 years, 10 years, or 20 years. Uh, to make things simple, the time periods would be from the most recent trading day. If today is Sunday, then it's uh, we start from uh, Friday. Then we subtract the number of days from the most recent trading day by calendar days. Uh, the entry and exit days are adjusted to reflect the nearest trading day. Uh, then total lines of transactions are assigned for every preference. If you find that there are certain selections you no longer wanted, then enter zero. You can assign by entering your preference ranking. Uh, so one would be the most transaction. Uh, but if you choose this route, then it does allocate to every preference. So if you don't intend to utilize all the selections, uh, then enter X in the enter values column and enter all the lines that you want to assign. Uh, the left number means the unique count of all the tickers under this category. Uh, so if you enter more transactions, it might just create multiple selections per category, which is not an issue because uh, traders or investors do tend to create multiple transactions per company. Uh, so the right side does indicate M if that's the case. Um, it just means higher chance of multiple selections on one ticker or symbol or company. But entering less number does not imply that this won't happen either because ticker selection is random. Uh, so section four of this page doesn't allow directly entering the lines because there's uh, 72 lines created from 24 preferences. Then you multiply that three uh, times three time periods, so that's 72 lines, uh, too cumbersome. For a preference with zero lines, it also creates a zero, zero lines for this section. So no worries if you do um, not utilize all the preferences. Uh, the visualization in section five uh, will help us create normalization. Uh, it will help us create uh, the transactions, normalizing the transactions throughout the years, month, day. So the daily month or year average might not have so much as priority if that's what you intend so you check this section uh, to make sure that you know there are uh, the average is, is around the same for all this uh, throughout the years uh, month day um, so that, that's what this section uh, that's a goal of that section it it just means that you know it might be that you enter well, you have to enter the percentage, but you might have entered like 20%. And for one year, assigning like 20% uh, of the total transaction, that might, you know, uh, increase dramatically the number of transactions uh, in just that time period in compared to other years. So if you don't want that to happen, then check this section. And then uh, section six, once again, reminds you of the assignment you made per preference. So you, you do know uh, previously that you entered this lines, but if you need to be reminded, oh, okay, I uh, actually entered more transactions in this preference. Do you still want that? You can make changes, um, you know, before you hit the copy button. Um, which will create a static uh, selection. Um, a little bit of the back end, there's a sheet called L1 that's, that start assigning which ticker symbol qualifies per preference. Uh, but even when a zero line is assigned, it still continues to assign a numbering for each ticker. But it could be made not to. Uh, with a simple change in formula, but I didn't make any changes because there's also another sheet uh, that S1 is the one that finalizes all the ticker selections, assigning a random number to pick for every preference. Uh, so 
in L1, there is a, it starts numbering, let's say, 1 to 90. Then in S1, that's when it starts to actually get the qualifying ticker uh, through random selection. And then preferences are skipped, like you see in line turning 8 after 6, because you entered 0 in preference 7, which is the oil and gas. Yeah, that I actually don't want any transactions regarding this preference. So it does skip those lines. And that's why we see this, that uh, the preference 7 has 0 count. So you, if you look at this sheet, you do see, oh yeah, there's 0 count for those preferences in which I entered 0. So all of the 20,000 lines will have valid ticker or symbol that's aligned with what the user preferred. Okay, it's just showing you the formula. It does, um, it, it does work, and it, it does follow what the user preferred. So the second page of this workbook is about assigning the percentage of transactions that are still open and also the percentage of transactions that we want to be short. So the rest of the transactions will already have been closed. When we assign the percentage shorts, however, it may assign to a closed position. So it could be either. So we do have the first, uh, so first we do have to decide how we go about making a random selection. Uh, but to do that, we have to examine our transaction lines. If you go to S2 sheet and look at every box, which is the preference and time period. Uh, so for example, box 41 is actually our 14th preference in time period three. Uh, that's the market exchange NYSE in the time period between 2001 to 4000 calendar days. So it means our transactions entry were made between five to 10 years ago. But if you look at the box, uh, if you look at the box days and from entry to exit per box, we see that some exits were done between 0 to 5 days of entry up to 11.31 to 14.13 days of entry because our formula for exit is from one day of entry up to the most recent trading day. So in the columns that box are in our numbered lines and what we see throughout is that even if we get most of our open transactions in the earliest lines only it didn't really make any difference in terms of the uh, of days till exit uh, since we are partitioning it by preference and time periods we're getting an already uniform collection of data and there's other uh, types of variables we can look at there's also um, the month or the year but overall it's very uniform 
however, even if that were the case, I still strive to spread it out. So if we only needed maybe 10 out of 100 lines, we tried to get the 10th line on, for example, the 40th line, 40, or four times that we needed. So we do have a different ra randomization levels, increasing flexibility when the portion of what we needed is significantly less. Uh, giving us more leeway on trying to reach the tail end. So after that, if you, you know, once you entered, you know, the percentage that you wanted for each uh, preference for each time period, you then hit the copy status button, and then we move on to the next page, the next and final page. When the user interacts with this workbook, it could take less than five minutes and you can keep changing the output until you see the result is matching your own vision. You don't always have to choose to have a more even transaction throughout. Maybe your story is that you have significantly more transactions now than earlier or now than earlier years or you are more of an active shorter now than ever before. Or you traded mostly biotechnology and technology stocks and that compromised of about 80% of your transactions. Or you want to trade the same company over 100 times. So we get this part of the equation right before we delve into actually getting the prices, uh, which could take many hours. You have to tap into Yahoo Finance database and the response can be very slow. We want to lessen the time we have to redo our aggregation because we weren't happy with the result. Uh, so this part is truly crucial and we can easily control or modify this part until we get it right. 